Hi, I'm Dr. Madeline Kelleher, and I'm a scientist at the University of Colorado's Anschutz Medical Campus. The campus is beautiful and hosts well over 6,000 scientists doing research on everything from peanut allergies and cancer treatments to mice that don't get fat on a high-fat diet. I love getting to work in a place that's surrounded by smart, hardworking, and curious people who never stop asking questions. My own questions focus on a woman's health during pregnancy and how that affects the health of her child. I use umbilical cords that mothers donate to science when they give birth, and I grow stem cells from those cords in dishes. We can do a lot of studies on the cells, looking for differences in epigenetics, insulin sensitivity, and proteins, depending on if the umbilical cord came from a baby whose mother was obese versus normal weight, or who had high versus low levels of glucose during pregnancy, or other related comparisons. Something I do a lot in the lab is grow up the infant stem cells in a dish and then scrape those cells off into a tube. To measure how much protein is in each of those samples, I do a BCA assay. That stands for bisaconic acid assay, which is just a fancy way of saying that I'm measuring how much total protein is in each of my samples. This lets me know what factor I need to dilute each sample by so that I'm starting with the same concentration of each sample when I do experiments further down the line. This is important because when I grow up two subjects in dishes, one dish might have slightly more cells than the other. That dish, like subject two in this example, would then have more protein because each cell is filled with protein. So having more cells means that there's more protein. So if I'm interested in knowing which subject has more of protein A, and let's say that protein is linked to diabetes risk, it might seem like subject two has more of protein A. But maybe that is because there was just more overall protein since there were more cells in the dish. I use a BCA assay to show me how much total protein there is, and then I use that number to calculate how much to dilute my samples by. After doing that dilution, I'm ready to measure protein A. And once the samples have been properly diluted, it may turn out that subject two actually has less of protein A. So let's get to it. While the protein samples were stored in the freezer, the protein may have settled to the bottom. So I use a vortexer to shake up the sample and make sure that the protein is evenly distributed in the solution. Then I use a pipette to transfer a tiny amount of the protein solution into a well of a 96 well plate. As you can see, it's a very tiny amount, not much bigger than the period at the end of a sentence. I repeat that for each sample, doing each one in duplicate meaning doing the same sample twice so that I can measure my accuracy. Then, in a trough, I add reagent A, which has ingredients like bisaconic acid and sodium bicarbonate, the scientific word for baking soda. Then I add reagent B, which has cupric sulfate. When the copper from the cupric sulfate comes into contact with protein, it will lose a charge, going from plus two to plus one. Any of the copper ions that are plus one will be turned purple by the bisaconic acid. So the more purple you see, the more protein there is. So I add a mixture of reagent A and reagent B to each of the wells on my plate. This can be done quickly and accurately with a multi-channel pipette, which adds the same amount of liquid to eight wells at once. Once the plate is filled, I put it in the incubator for 30 minutes to help the reaction with the copper happen faster. Then I put the plate into a plate reader, which will tell me exactly how much purple is in each well.
Now that I know how much protein was in each of my samples, I can dilute them all to the same total concentration and then run a simple Western. This will let me determine if infants whose mothers were obese during pregnancy compared to those whose mothers were normal weight during pregnancy have different levels of important proteins involved in insulin signaling. Thanks for watching.